welcome back to another tutorial on making REST APIs with Flask and Python. My name is Ronak Vyas and this video is a collaboration with Programming Knowledge. In the previous video, we talked about how we can make a fully fledged CRUD operated REST API which performs create, update and delete operations for a to-do list API. And we have uh, implemented the entire logic behind the REST APIs and all we have left to do is actually save our tasks into a proper database and not a python dictionary so in this video we're going to do just that we're going to save our uh, tasks to do list task into a sqli database and then uh, access our tasks from there as well and in the next video we'll talk about how to deploy our api on the internet so that other people can use it and we'll talk about that in the next video so let's get started let's start making our uh, fully fledged rest api with the database so let's see where we were in the previous uh, video first. Uh, let's see how our API works. So once we have the server running, uh, we can first see that this is where we were. We had an api.py file and we had our tasks in a Python dictionary and we were able to write our APIs and then access our Python dictionary uh, by converting it to JSON because it is serializable. So now let's see how it works. So we have a get on slash to do's. So a get on slash to do's will be giving you all the tasks that are there in the to do list app right here. So yeah, we have our hello world task. And uh, now let's uh, build on top of this and actually integrate our SQLI database into our REST APIs. So let me close our server and go to our file. Now, since we'll be using uh, SQLite, we'll be using something called as Flask SQL Alchemy, uh, which is going to help us uh, work with the database. So let's import that from Flask SQL Alchemy, import the class SQL Alchemy. And now let's write some configurations for our database. So I already have them here. Let me just get them. And yeah, so this is exactly similar to what we had done in the Flask web application tutorial where we have a database, we configure it to where we store our database and we instantiate our uh, SQL Alchemy object. And now, uh, like a generic Flask web application, we are going to be making a model, which is going to be a way where we actually map our objects to the database. So we have a class to do model, which is going to inherit from model. And we're going to have three things. So we're going to have uh, ID, task, and summary. So ID is going to be the primary key and the unique ID for each task. Then we have the task title and the summary. So let me just put them right here and here we go. So we have ID, task, and summary. It's going to be uh, an integer string and string respectively. Uh, the next thing which we have to do is basically create this in a database, right? Create our SQL database. So we can do that by having a db.create all function and this will create our uh, SQL database when we uh, start our server. So we want to do that and we have to make sure that we do this after we make our to do model class that you know uh, all of these uh, rows and the table can actually be uh, initialized in the database. And yeah, let's do this and let's actually build uh, or actually just create our database. So yeah, Python API.py. And uh, yeah, as you can see with the SQL Alchemy errors, you can ignore the errors for now, but we have our database inside. So as you can see, SQLite.db. So let's comment this out because we don't need any more. We already have our database. And uh, let's remove our to-dos from here. So actually, uh, let's just make it empty for now. Or let's actually remove it. Okay, so now we need to add uh, a way to use our database with our API. So the first thing which we need to do is figure out how are we going to actually show our data uh, or return our data to the client when a uh, there is a get API request, how are we going to return our to-do list? So we have to uh, make sure that it is serializable. So it has to be JSON. So the best way to do is to use a Python dictionary, right? So we're going to actually uh, mock that way of writing Python dictionaries 
by something called as resource fields. So resource fields are actually uh, a set of rules that you have uh, uh, in which you have to return your API information. So if I want to return a JSON, I have to make sure that every single uh, uh, API method, uh, which I annotate with uh, the fields, should definitely follow that as a rule. So let me show you uh, what is happening so you can understand for yourself. So we have something called as resource fields is equal to first ID. So we want to display the ID. And this is going to be an integer. So the way we actually tell Flask is by using something called as fields. So we have id equal to fields dot integer. And similarly, we have the task and summary as the string. So let me just get it here. Yeah. So this is how uh, uh, every single uh, return uh, statement is going to look like. So we're going to return an id, task, and summary, and all the methods. Uh, which will be following this when they return a to-do list task, uh, we have to annotate them with something called as Marshall width. So once we annotate our methods with Marshall width, uh, the fields, we can then use them and return the API accordingly. So now let's just annotate everything. So we have Marshall width resource fields. Copy that. So we'll be returning uh, this task in a get request, we'll be doing it in a post request and a pull request. So we won't be doing it in a delete request because we have no, no a task to show. So yeah, this is how we're going to actually inject our uh, resource fields into the return statements. And now let's start writing the logic for having it inside a database. So the first thing which we're going to do is the post API. So we're not going to make any big changes here, so just uh, very little changes, and you'll just see it right now. Uh, nothing complicated to do. So once we have our arguments uh, from the body of the post request, we have a task and summary which you can actually you know, use this to uh, play with. Let me just show you what happens now. So now we do a query. So since you already covered this in the Flask tutorial, I'm not going to cover this again, but let's just uh, see a bit of an explanation. So we have a task which we uh, ask the database to give us by the to-do ID which we specify. And if the task already exists, then we cannot create the same task with the same task ID. So we abort. And if there is no such task, then we create a new object. And then we add that object to our database, commit the changes, and return that object to do. Now, since we'll be returning a to-do object from the database, and we want that to look like this. We want an object, a Python object, to look like this. This is where fields and Marshall width come into the picture. So with resource fields, we tell that we want to return ID task and summary, and the Marshall width annotation actually injects, injects that rule into our method. So yeah, this is the logic for post. Let's start it for get now. So it's going to be very really similar to the Python Tutorials as we had this last. So now here we again uh, ask the database to filter by ID, get the first task. And if the task does not, does not exist, we cannot get it. So we say we could not find that task. And if the task is here, then we return it. And since it is again an object, a uh, Python object, and we want it to look like this, we add a Marshall width. Let's go ahead with put and see how we can change that. So put is going to be pretty similar to post, but it will changes or similar to this actually. So again, we get the object. If there is no object, we cannot update an object, right? And if there is, then we say the task, the object uh, uh, properties. So we have task dot uh, object variables. So we have task which is going to be changed. Or if there's a summary, then that is also going to be changed. And then we commit our changes, return the task and marshal it with resource fields. The last is delete. So again, pretty straightforward, nothing complicated to do here. We just have task equal to model.query. We say delete task, and we're good to go. And now we have uh, finally added everything to our database, but we have one left, which is the another URL endpoint, so this one. We need to write 
something to get all the tasks, not just by task ID. So this is what I will do, but in a different way. So you're not using uh, Marshall with resource fields here, but an actual Python dictionary, so that we can understand how this actually can work both ways with and without resource fields. So here we do a query for all the tasks. Then we have a Python dictionary and we just populate that Python dictionary uh, with the task objects that we have and we return that Python dictionary. And since Python dictionary is already serializable, we don't have to worry about marshalling it with any of the fields. So yeah, this is uh, how we write our APIs and let's run and see if this works or not. We have Python API.py. Oh, my bad. Return is outside function. Where? Line 40. Let's go to line 40. Oh, sorry. We didn't, we didn't even have a get request here. Wow. And yeah, that was my bar. And we will do it now. We have our database ready. We have, let's just see if we have commented create all. Yes, we have. And let's actually make our first call. So we do a post uh, with a body. So let's say task is going to be task one. And the summary is going to be task one summary in JSON format. And if everything works smoothly, then this should work. And let's hit send. And yeah, so we have a few errors. Give me a second, guys. Let's fix them up right now. So yeah, let's create our database again. Might be some mistake with that. Happens sometimes. Don't have to worry about it. We do this. We reload and we should have a DB. Great. We can comment this out. Save it again. And so is starting again. And we're good to go. So let's try this again. So to do slash one, send. And see, we were able to actually uh, add a task to the database. And now let's actually add another one. So let's say task two. Task to summary. All right. And we have slash two. Let's add task two. We will to add that, add that as well. And let's get all the tasks now. Get to do's. No body, please. And hit send. And yeah, we have task one and two here. Now, the difference between using a Python dictionary and database is that now, even after we close the server and open it again, we'll have all of our two tasks ready here. So before we finish this video, uh, let's actually just test put and read. So put slash one, I'm gonna put a body. So we are absolutely between summary and updating. Summary is gonna be task one, summary updated. And hit send. And it is updated now. Uh, we will also delete it the same way. And press delete and yeah, we're good to go. So this is how we make a REST API using Flask and Python. In the next video, we'll be deploying our uh, API into the cloud or the internet so that every, anybody can you know, just uh, use our API in their own uh, web applications or mobile applications. So yeah, that was it for today. Thank you and have a nice day.